All righty. Welcome back for another episode of Two Plane Sports. Today is Friday, August 5th, and we're going to be talking a little bit of recruiting, a little bit of what makes, you know, what is a successful season uh, for OU with the new coaching staff and just have kind of an open discussion on that because I feel like the definition of successful a successful season might differ between us three and then especially between our viewers right now. So, uh, but before we get into it, just want to say, we appreciate it. We're over 4,800 subscribers. We got We have a goal of 5,000 subscribers before Brandon heads off the boot camp. If you stick, if you stuck around for the last video, uh, we said, if you love America, hit the subscribe button because Brandon's going off the boot camp. So do that and help us out. Uh, if you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify, leave us a review. Um, and then also follow us and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Everything is linked in the description below. Um, for our members, uh, we also have a $4.99, uh, $4.99 a month membership for everyone that has the opportunity to get more uh, Two Planes content. That's going to be a lot more Sooners content, a little more personal. Uh, just for reference, if you're watching on the YouTube, YouTube app, there's actually no way for you to join us that way. So you have to get on your computer or just get on your, your phone and actually get off the app. You're able to subscribe that way. For some reason, YouTube doesn't allow you to do it through the app. So be sure to do that. We're having a members only live stream uh, kind of as a call in on a Zoom like what we're recording right now on August 22nd, where all our members are going to be able to join the call. We're going to have a discussion 30, 30, 45 minutes, give or take. And just talk a lot of OU, talk about us, talk about you guys, everything else. So everyone will be able to join that as a member. And we're also going to go live on August 22nd after that for everyone else as a live stream setting. And then we are also going to be releasing a members only video on August 15th. And it'll be driven by you guys. So if there's any specific questions that you guys want to ask regarding recruiting, um, you know, anything about OU as a team, uh, you can submit those questions. It'll be in the community tab for you guys to answer what you want to see and what you want to talk or want us to talk about. So a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff that you guys can can uh, kind of lead and, ca and we can cater to and uh, be able to kind of bring some some value to you guys. So that's $4.99 a month and be sure to subscribe and join and we'll get into this video today. All right. So um, a couple of days ago, Jacoby Johnson made it official and announced that he has a commitment date um, scheduled, which is August fifteenth, uh, I believe. Is it? No, it's August thirteenth. August August thirteenth at five p.m. Central. Um, he's going to be announcing at the high school, Mustang High School. There, I think they're doing like a welcome or get, meet, get to meet the Mustangs or something like that. So he's going to announce he's got they're the top Broncos. Broncos, Meet the Mustangs. Yeah. That just sounds stupid. Okay. The, <laughs> <laughs> Meet the Broncos. Yeah. So it's uh, his top five, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Michigan, Alabama, and Stanford. Um, it seems like OU is in a pretty solid spot uh, to add another top 100 player. Brandon, you've seen Jacoby play a lot. You've, I feel like you've watched the most out of all of us. Uh, what do you think and how do you feel about OU's chances? I feel really good about our chances. Everything I've heard, everybody we've talked to um, seems to, you know, keep pointing to the fact that OU sits in the driver's seat for him. Um, so, I mean, I feel good about our chances to land him on the 13th. I'd be shocked if he goes elsewhere, to be frank. Um, and then just the player that you're going to get out of Jacoby Johnson. I mean, he's a dude. He's an MF and dude, man. He can, I mean, he can play really at a really, really high level on both sides of the ball at 6A high school football in Oklahoma. Uh, he's not playing slouches on Saturday. And he, I mean, like I said, the, the, I think the craziest thing I've ever seen him do, he took like a, a swing pass out of the backfield and went like 97 yards, made three or four people miss the whole way. Uh, at the time, Alex Grinch was watching it. They He saw that and left. Like it was enough. Uh, the dude can play. Um, uh, very excited. And hopefully he does make his commitment to Oklahoma. And I'd be shocked if he didn't. Yeah, I agree. I'm pretty sure. I think we're all pretty confident that he's going to be a sooner. <clears throat> um, remind me, he is being recruited as a cornerback, correct? Correct. Okay. okay. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a welcome addition to the defense. It's going to be the second DB in the, in this recruiting class, uh, hopefully adding a third at the end of the month. That's it's what it seems to be trending to. On a side note, if Ford doesn't – join into the NIL game and give this guy a Bronco or a Mustang, they're missing out on a big opportunity. I don't know if kids that aren't 18 can accept NIL right technically, but as soon as he turns 18, 
Ford needs to hop on that opportunity. He adds to if he does commit Saturday, and as you alluded to with McCarty Vickers on the twenty six and Eric McCarty already there. Um, we all, I think, are. I don't want to put. I don't want to put words in your guys' mouth, but um, I feel safe in saying we all think that the D line is the deepest position of the 2023 class and i think i think the db class will be number two um there's going to be some dudes in that defensive back for the 2023 class and i mean he adds to it yeah i would, I mean, I would say the for- line is number two that's fair that's fair i mean i just the dbs alone will have two top 100 players where the o-line only has one uh, and caden green uh I don't know. That's, that's I guess that's the only reason that, that I'm trying to and, argue that, and, I guess. And Josiah Wagner, I think, is going to keep climbing, too. Yeah, and, yeah, like you said, Wagner is also a four-star. He's, like, number 200-something overall. So it's extremely talented. Um, you know, he's got four crystal balls, he being Jacoby Johnson in favor of Oklahoma uh, at a six out of ten confidence levels. So it seems like most of the experts, whether it's Thune, Drum, Will Fong, they're all on the same page. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting was that whenever we had Brandon Drum on, we asked him about Jacoby Johnson's timeline, and he made it sound like end of August, beginning of September uh, was kind of more the timeline that he said on here, and then middle August ended up happening. So that visit where, you know, last week or, you know, end of July must have been a home run. Obviously, we saw all the locks, and uh, could he be t- could he be potentially one of the locks? We'd like to think so. Um, you know, it's just something we're gonna have to wait and see if it comes to fruition. But I mean, obviously something happened, something changed, some someone sold them on on just coming out and, and announcing his commitment. And the only thing I'm pretty sure that all the locks were guys that were present. So we just gotta keep following this. This would be the second one of the five that were tweeted from that weekend. You know, the next one. That I think we're all pretty secure in saying would be Bickers is the next announcement, and and he is one of those locks. I would think the other one is Renaud, and then potentially DJ Hicks. But again, we said it last time. Like it seems like with his p- commitment potentially being a little bit further away, or it's still uh, in the air. Yeah, and then Anthony Evans does announce on the same day as Bickers, so they both announce on the twenty sixth. So that could be a, another really good day. I mean August. You know, we, we didn't think that July could even be touched, but August is going to be pretty darn solid if you ask me. I mean, most 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 colleges would take an August as their best month that what Oklahoma oh, yeah. was going to put together. So it's looking pretty strong. Jacoby is a huge addition, and I think arguably he was, if there was one state, in-state player to keep, I think he was the one. And they're keeping, in my opinion, the best – player in the state at home so but anyway we'll keep an eye on him i don't think anything's going to really change i think we can all feel pretty confident about him with what he's going to do so well we'll move on uh today is thursday as we're recording this and ou ended up having their elite weigh-in uh where they had uh all over social media with schmitty being lifted up uh, everyone pumping each other up coach chavis was yelling at the camera uh, Venables got up there. What did you, I mean, that was just really cool. I mean, I've, I guess I've never seen something like that. They made it a lot of fun. It seemed like guys genuinely like each other and are a pretty close knit team. Jose, what do you think? I thought it was super cool. Um, you mentioned it before we started recording. Like it doesn't seem like any other school really does anything like this. Obviously it's, it's a way in. So it's not something that fans or even most you know, athletes would expect to be like a super fun time, especially for those that aren't are stressing about, about not making weight. I don't think many of this, much of this team was in that situation, given that they were trained by one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the country. So it was probably a really good, cool. Um, I think it really helps with like the, the chemistry of the team. That's something that whenever you hear any ex professional athlete or anyone that was in any sort of, you know, even in college, like in the, in the locker room, winning teams are teams that for the most part, like each other and can, can hang out with each other and have a good time. And these guys are having a good time when probably in situations where most te- most people in most teams are probably either stressing out or dreading the moment that they have to step up on that scale. 
it's it's not something kind of what you guys are both saying. It's not something that you would think would be a fun social media opportunity as a team lane or anything, but um, Oklahoma definitely seized it and made it pretty pretty freaking cool for all of us to be able to see. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think it just speaks to the closeness of the team and how they're the, the bond is is, is really going to be real this year. I think they're going to be closer than we've seen in OU team being a long time. I think Brent Venables is doing a hell of a job of making a true team. And I think we're going to see that pay off on the field on Saturdays. Um, really excited about it. And as you mentioned, I mean, I think we're the only school doing that, um, at least making cool ass. We're, we're like we're making way in school, uh, which is, which is fun. It's awesome for us. And definitely USC is not doing that shit. I, I saw a tweet from Daniel Parker Jr. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but uh, he he basically said, I'll, I'll read it for you. I tried to lift him up myself, him being Schmitty. I quickly learned that Schmitty himself is indeed Schmitty built and realized actually how stout he is. Um, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. But yeah, it's just something that this team just genuinely likes each other. Um, they want to play for each other. Um, and I don't know. I, I agree, Brandon. Something like that is just not happening elsewhere. Um, another quote that came out, and this is not exactly about the weigh-in, Coach B and just came out and said, this is the most excited I've been in my 20 years of coaching uh, this, about this upcoming season. And he said, not that I haven't been excited in the past, just that it's been a ton of fun. Um, it just, it just things like that gives me so much confidence for this fall. While this might not be the best roster in all of college football, them as a unit might play that way though, especially the best roster or the best team in the big 12. And that kind of leads us into the next topic is what do you guys consider as a successful season? I mean, what are you expecting? What would be disappointing to you? What would be, you know, meeting expectations and what would ex be exceeding Brandon, do you have kind of an idea of what you think would be where you stand on, on that? I genuinely, and it's going to sound like super homerish and super, um, no, maybe not, maybe not. I remember we've talked to tens of, I, I, I think if we don't win the big 12, it's a, it's, it's a disappointing season. I, I think the team definitely has the talent to do so. I think you look at, I think Baylor's still going to be there uh, for, as, as far as a tough team. I think that's one of the teams that I can see us having a hiccup against is Baylor. Um, but even if, 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 if you drop a game to them in the regular season, you got to go get it back in the Big 12 title game. Um, Oklahoma State was the other team that was a finalist last year. Um, I think they got worse. And I also don't – I mean, I think anything short of winning the Big 12 would be a disappointing season to me. I agree. I think not only – I think I saw a tweet from – I think it was Warren Sharp. He mentioned that Oklahoma, as of right now, is favored in all of their games as betting odds. So I think – well, I don't think we'll go undefeated. I, I think that's an unrealistic expectation. Would it be awesome? Yes. But, you know, most of the time you always drop a game. You know, anyone can beat you just having a bad day or they're just having an amazing day. You know, but winning the Big 12 is – I think that's success. I think exceeding would be – you know, getting into the playoffs this year, just because of all the new that's coming going into this year. You know, outside of like the results, I think another thing that we could point at, all right, we're at least trending in the right direction, is the defense. How much better does does that look from game one to game twelve? We're in the Big Twelve championship because right now, you know, like our expectation, or at least not our expectation, our expectations are high. And if they meet the expectations of Oklahoma fans, I think that is definitely a step in the right direction because in the last season, it was not great. It wasn't the worst Oklahoma has been in the last 10 years, but it wasn't great either. We need to at least look more aggressive. That's one thing, not, not miss out on simple tackles, especially when, you know, it, the guy, the, the linebacker, the DB or, you know, whoever the player has them, in arm's reach, but just tries to put a shoulder to him. Like, let's actually try to wrap up and, and do, do the job and trying to get the guy down. Also better defense against running quarterbacks. We're still going to see a lot of those this year. If we can't contain quarterbacks, 
it's going to be a struggle because most quarterbacks now aren't pocket passers. They're able to make plays on their feet. Yeah, and you bring up a good point because, I mean, I, I think of last season and just watching Gary Bohannon run wild. Uh, Spencer Sanders ran quite a bit too. I mean, it was, it was painful to watch. Another thing that I'm keeping an eye on is the special teams. Can they play good, sound, fundamental football and make good decisions, not just automatically – let the ball, you know, on a kick return, let it fly over their head or, you know, you know, call a fair catch every time you catch it. I thought that was bizarre ever since uh, Coach Beamer left. It was just really an odd, odd special teams. Um, I do agree as far as what what is a successful season, um, as far as the record goes, I think, you know, 10 and two in the regular season is a successful season. And even if they did end up nine and three, which I highly doubt ha- would happen, if they're playing well, tackling, like you said, Jose, trending and getting better as the season goes on, that could be, you know, that would, in my mind, be progress. If if they play kind of rough and they drop a few games, say they did lose to Nebraska, they did lose to Kansas State um, and, so, and maybe Texas, but the last half, you know, four or five games, they just go on a tear, win, maybe not get into the Big 12 championship, but just go win their bowl game. I feel pretty confident about that, but we I really went, don't. Huh? We went ten and two last year with a coach with one foot out the door. I feel I, I don't know how it couldn't be seen as a downgrade if they lose more than two games with a coach who's fully invested. I understand he's got a tricky system to learn and this, that, and the other, uh, and he's he's implementing a new, you know, a brand new offense and a brand new defense, and, it, and it, you might see some hiccups and growing pains and da 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 whatever, but. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the team won ten games last year with the coach who didn't want to be there. I, I don't. To me, that has to be the floor. If you lose more than two games, I, I think it's a, it's it's a massive disappointment. Yeah, I mean, there's. I get that. That, that makes sense. But also, you're you're taking a quarterback that you know missed most of last year. Brand new quarterback, brand new system. Granted, he knew he knows the system. I mean, both new systems on both sides of the ball. I, I, maybe I'm just trying to be, as Jose gets a rap for the pessimist, as far as you know, trying to set expectations. Like they could go twelve and zero. There is a there is a world that this team goes twelve and up. But I want us to also kind of not have that expectation. That's just my opinion, though. Yeah, and I think after last season, we're and mate. And it might just be we don't know how this coaching staff is going to approach the season, how the success that they can potentially have. Obviously, we can all be we're all super excited about what the potential is, but we don't we haven't seen the result as a unit and what they're actually going to produce. Because last year, if you guys remember when and most people that that are watching this probably didn't see it. But when we did our preseason, like it kind of something like this, like our expectations, we kind of walked through the schedule. We thought 12-0 and was inevitable. We thought Oklahoma was going to be in the championship, playing for the championship, and because we had that type of talent. You know, we had two number one quarterbacks. We had really good running backs. At the time, yes, we were still lacking depth, but we had just brought in Eric Gray. We had Kennedy Brooks, who we all love. We had really good receivers. The defense at the end of the previous season was starting to look really good. And then everything dropped off. And I agree with you, Brandon. It seems like the coaches just weren't fully invested in last year's team. And that's probably why the team didn't succeed to the the same, to what our expectations were. But now it's a reset. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how this team is actually going to progress. And we, I think that's why, like I mentioned earlier, we just need to see them improve every single game. I don't expect to go 12 and 0 because that seems unrealistic. Most teams like how often is there a 12 and 0 team like one or two it's really if hard that, to go it's rare yeah. it's very rare so oklahoma's bound to drop at least one game i think 11 and 1 is very realistic 10 and 2 i agree should be the floor but if we went 9 and 3 and we started looking better at the end i would say all right i mean we, kind of a shit season but next year it's going to be awesome we're going to bring in all these 23 recruits, most of them seem sound like they're going to be early enrollees. And the team is only improving because now they have, they're comfortable or more comfortable in the system. 
depending on how Dylan Gabriel does, he could still come back for another year. Like this team is only going up. It just need we just need to see exactly what it's going to look like. And I like I mentioned during our live stream that Nebraska game is really going to show us can this team compete for a playoff spot or are we just looking to improve as the season goes on and hopefully feel good about the next season. I, I agree. Think, ooh, so, sorry. Oh, I, I, I think a couple things that we can keep an eye on as like um, almost a measuring stick in a way uh, is three quarterbacks that you, that we, you guys all talked about earlier. You guys both alluded to kind of had a good, a good game against us. I know Adrian Martinez, I, I was just looking up the numbers. Uh, he had 289 yards, one touchdown, one pick against us. Uh, but he also rushed like thir- almost 40 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Spencer Sanders didn't throw the ball all that well. Um, I think he had like 150 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. But he had nearly 100 rushing yards, going back to your whole point about we couldn't contain that. And then Casey Thompson, I'm not even going to bother looking up those numbers of what he did to us last year because I feel like it's going to say 1,500 yards by himself, and six touchdowns, no picks. The dude shredded our defense last year. So – I think we we can kind of see the progress of the defense in some regard um, by just comparing numbers against those three quarterbacks who kind of had decent games against us last year. Just that's just something fun to look look forward Ooh. to. Do you guys know who Nebraska's quarterback is this year? Because Adrian it's be is Casey, like Casey State. Casey Thompson. Yeah, Casey oh, yeah. Thompson. So, I forgot about that. So we're going up against. Mm-hmm. Same quarterbacks from last year, essentially, and then and Casey Thompson fucking kicked our ass last year. Like, if you guys remember his like his individual performance last year was, yeah, was really really terrible. good against us. And granted, he got you know slightly boosted because his first pass of the game was a screen pass in which he didn't even throw the ball forward one yard, and then you got Latrell McCutcheon's whatever the hell he's doing on defense out there letting him <laughs> house one for eighty five yards. But you know, so that boosts his stats a little bit. But, I mean, besides just that one screen pass that whatever his name was made the trail look stupid and house it on him. Um, Xavier really, Worthy. Yeah, there wasn't really many. Um, I feel like, I mean, he was hitting he was hitting some bombs and stuff on us. He, he hit at least two, two touchdowns that were bombs of dudes just being wide open. Yeah, I mean, he really was. I mean, I have to kind of look up uh, – that those stat lines, but you know, something also, I think he ended up throwing for 388 yards and five touchdowns. So, uh, not bad. Um, not bad. I no, I don't see that happening for him because also there's not as much talent around him in Nebraska or at Nebraska. Um, another thing I think to think about, and I'm not, this is not a slide or anything else, but this is Brent Venable's first time being a head coach and managing uh, timeouts and managing the kind of the flows of the game and making the ultimate decisions as far as, you know, if we're going to do an onside kick or, or things like that. And um, I think there's an element of he can, he's, he's been around football for so long, but it's different whenever you're the head man and all the guys, all the coaches and all the players are looking at you, like, are you going to call a timeout here? Uh, And things like that. I feel like there might be a, the first few games, it might be kind of that, the jitters. And I think that Nebraska game is going to be a little bit of a test for him. If it's close. Um, I, I'm not saying that he's going to mess up anything. I just feel like you see some first year head coaches kind of, I don't know, kind of lose their minds sometimes, but I don't think Venables will, but that could be like, Oh man, why is he taking a timeout here? I, I don't know. That's just something to think about. Hopefully your prediction on the Nebraska game comes true because you see well, that as us not playing a very close one there. No, no, yeah. I said I think that OU beats them bad enough that Scott Frost might get fired. Yeah. After that game. You did you did say that. Um, I still stand by it. Looking at this year's, I know we're not really doing a schedule breakdown, but looking at it, what's the more hostile environment where it's really the first big test for that for for Brent Venables as a game manager and not a defensive coordinator? Nebraska or Texas? So I think both of them are very hostile environments, but we are at Lincoln, but Red River is Red River. I think it's Nebraska, and I don't think it's all that close. At least with Red River, it's split. It's 50-50. So, I mean, yeah, it will get rocking, and it will be a very hostile place. We've all been there. It's definitely going to be that. But Lincoln, I mean, it's going to be 110,000-plus all against you, and it's going to be loud as shit, and they're going to bring it. And, I mean, that, in essence, like, it's like – I feel like, and I don't know any Nebraska fans, so I can't validate this this theory here, but I feel like if they could pick one win on their entire schedule next year, 
uh, I think 99% of Nebraska fans are going to circle that Oklahoma one as man. If we, if we go three and nine, but we beat Oklahoma here, it's, it's not a horrible season. I mean, the season's not a total loss, I guess. I, I a hundred percent agree. I think they want this win bad. The one thing that I think we can look at the first two weeks of the year, I know that for, for most teams, it's going to be, they're going to be cupcake games. But if we remember last year, Nebraska, didn't they open up against Illinois and they looked kind of shitty. They never really, <laughs> they, I mean, they didn't, they never like got blown out in a game or they rarely got blown out in a game. It's a, I'm not going to pretend like I remember every single game they played, but I know that's like one of the stats and why people feel like they could take that next jump is because they never actually got blown out or very rarely mm-hmm. did they get blown out. But if that defense didn't improve this year, then I think Brum has the right prediction because our running game is going to be significantly better. And Illinois was having a fucking game against those guys week zero last year. Well, the difference was, in my opinion, why the game against Nebraska last year was so close was because Nebraska was winning the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. I don't think they win it this year. And at that point, I think OU is going to impose their will because they're going to be actual. They're going to actually be able to stand up because they're actually strong, you know, strong enough to actually go head to head. Because Big Ten, it is a lot of in the trenches. I mean, the Big Ten and the SEC, it's it's all about offense and defensive lines. And we were too much finesse and too much counters and things like that. It's just it was the mindset wasn't there, and it is now. I also don't think that game against Nebraska last year would have been so close um, on the scorecard if, and hear me out, if DJ Graham did not make that ridiculous interception on fourth down. That was fourth and nine, and they were on their own, or they were on R30 or 35 or something. They throw the ball down there, and what DJ Graham picks it off and is down by contact at the three or four yard line. We go three and out, punt out of our own end zone, give them a real short field. They score, make it 23 16. Um, so, I mean, I think as incredible of a, of a play it was. And at this point, I'm glad he made it because we got the win. It's all over. Now he just has a highlight play. Um, but like in the moment, uh, that's a ball that you want to see hit the ground. It, it's a lot better for your team if the ball hits the ground versus him making that ridiculous play. Um, and then one more thing about Nebraska. Yeah, everybody talked about them. Guys, yeah, like they were the best three and nine team ever. Remember that take from everybody around the country, which if you think about it, that – I mean, yeah, I guess because they lost close games, but at the end of the day, they were three and nine, and I don't think that's it's possible to be a good, uh, the best three and nine team ever. Like, what the? That's that's kind of stupid to me. That's an oxymoron. The best and three wins in a season just doesn't go together. Um, so, you know, another thing I think that I'm looking for on this this upcoming season and what can be considered as a success is can Oklahoma. Um, play a full 60 minutes? Can they put teams away? Can they go with, um, you know, if they're up 20 points, can they not let up and just, and just finish the game and win by 21, 28 points? Let's not have to sweat it out. Um, I, I think that's a big portion of a great team is able to put teams away and keep them away. Um, I feel like if you can't do that, like Oklahoma hasn't been able to do in previous years as of recently, you let teams back in, you let the Iowa States, you let the Kansas States. I mean, you think last year, Kansas State was a was a nightmare. Texas was a nightmare, but they weren't. That was more so OU was coming back. But Nebraska wouldn't go away. West Virginia wouldn't go away. It was just West Virginia was was right in there the entire time. We, We won that game. As time expired on a Gay Burkich like twelve yard field goal, I mean, yeah. I mean, we you know, but like that game was ridiculously close. And I and I think I mentioned on the live stream Monday night. I I think that Kansas State game this year we have it in Norman, but I, Kansas State's going to be a better team than a lot of people are talking about right now. I think that game's going to be that's one of the games that I can see us having a lot of trouble with. Well, I mentioned well. it in our in our live stream. I think you can. In a way, you can kind of see Nebraska as kind of a trap game because even though we are coming back home versus K-State this year, I mean, we're going on the road to a very hostile environment and Lincoln then coming right back, even though it's at home, probably one of the tougher opponents for the year. 
So especially one that is, is going to be sneaky good. It's not, not a team that's being talked about. But going back to Brum's point, I think that's one thing that Brent Venables brings to this team that Lincoln Riley did not is the fieriness that he has makes me think that he's not going to be a guy to sit back. Even if we are up, you know, three touchdowns, four touchdowns, he's not going to take his foot off the off the gas. I think he's going to let his team keep going until the, the clock hits zero. I mean, he might not be throwing it at throwing it as much to keep running up the score, but he's not going to put the team in a position to go three and out until the other team's got an opportunity to come back. Like I, I don't see his personality being that that kind of way. And Lincoln Riley didn't show that until the the playoff game in Georgia, and I think that's where questions started coming up on him. Like when he did have a big lead, he did start letting teams come back because he got more worried about not losing than winning the game and completing and completing it and playing till the clock hits zero. That just doesn't seem like something this this coaching staff is going to be okay with doing. Yeah, and, you know, Clemson, you'd always look down at the bottom of the screen. You'd see them put up 70 points on a lot of schools, and they just would not stop. And I think that's – I agree with you. I don't think they're going to stop. It, there's no mercy, and I think it's just full on. You go for it all the time. But if OU can start the season 4-0, that's when the 12-0 and thought is going to start coming into my head because I think the earlier in the season is where they might stumble just because of, you know, it's a lot of new stuff. But if they start 4-0 and they beat Nebraska and they take care of Kansas State, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe this team can go 12-0. And I'm not I'm not saying that they can't, but that's when I'll start to believe is that 4-0, 5-0 in that in that time frame. Yeah. Because they I, should get better for November. I think if I – I mean, I won't be able to see this part of the season. I won't be able to see to the latter half of the season. But, like, while you guys are writing me, if you write to me that we beat Texas and we're – what is that, the fifth game of the season or sixth game? Six. Six. If we beat te- – if you guys – let inform me through the carrier pigeon that we defeat Texas and we're six and oh, that's when I will carry your pigeon back to you. Um, that I am, I'm with 100%. it. I think, I think, yeah, I think 12 and 0 is that's when I'll start drinking the Kool Aid, I guess, if you will. Uh, although I won't be actually having Kool Aid, you know, I'll probably, I imagine I'll only be drinking water, but I don't know. I've never been to boot camp, so we'll see. It could be just a fun <laughs> camping trip. You might be lucky for some water too. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, I think you're right. If we go 4 0, there's definitely there's gonna be a lot of momentum behind this team. It wouldn't surprise me if they're ranked in the top five in the country at that point, because even though Pete, there, you know, a lot of people do have reservations about the team. I mean, you just beat Nebraska on the road and a and a good Kansas State team. If we beat Texas, I don't I don't see how Oklahoma wouldn't be a top two or three team. I got, obviously that would depend on, you know, Alabama and, and teams in the SEC and Ohio state, but Oklahoma should be right up there at least midway through the season. And then you know, we're kind of going all over the place with this. Well, my question is going to be where, where do you guys see Oklahoma being ranked um, in the preseason rankings for the AP poll and the coaches poll? Uh, where do you see Oklahoma opening up week one at? Hopefully something horrible. Hopefully they put us to like number twenty-two or something, just ridiculous. There's, that, uh, there's there's no I, I know it's no. I mean that that would that, that would be the ideal situation. I think if everybody just says they suck and you know we can kind of hang it up on the bulletin board because Brent Venables is already a master motivator. So like that would be the most ideal situation is if they put him something like that or you know somehow even out of the top twenty-five. Oh my god, I would love that. That would be the best thing ever for this team, I think. But no, I, I mean not. they'll probably be placed. So what like in the eight through twelve range? I was my thought is that for preseason, every media outlet that posts one of these will and you know and coaches pull the AP whatever, they're all going to put Oklahoma somewhere between like twelve to to eighteen. I, I like if I'm going to put one specific digit to it, I'll, I'll say fifteen, and they'll put Southern Cal right above Oklahoma to piss off all the Oklahoma fans because they know they're going to get a reaction out of this fan base if they do that. They're gonna, and then I think they're just going to, they're going to do that for preseason to get a reaction. And two, it's going, they're all, they're kind of questioning this stuff because they're going to say, well, you guys lost two number one quarterbacks and Spencer Rattler and Caleb Williams. You lost Mario Williams, who 
if you really look at it objectively, he didn't add any much any more than Mar- Marvin Mims did, and Marvin Mims has been a good receiver for two years. We brought back the OEs. They're going to say you lost Kennedy Brooks, your leading rusher. They're going to mention how half of our defense, like the studs of our defense went to the draft. Like they're going to have way too many. They're going to look at what Oklahoma lost rather than what they've gained. Oklahoma realistically should be in the top 10, but I don't think we will be in the preseason. See, I, I think OU falls in the seven to 10 range. Because I don't know. I just feel like they, it's very talented. People are going to have Oklahoma up. They're pretty high. I think USC will be top 15. OU and USC will be close. Okay. I don't know if one way or the other. I think I think they're going to have Oklahoma ahead of USC, to be completely honest with you. I think OU probably hits at eight or nine, probably nine. Um, I think they're just inside the top 10. Uh, I think Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia are for sure above them. I think um, – I don't know. Could Utah be up there? Could Notre Dame? Notre Dame's always up there just because they're Notre Dame and the media loves Notre Dame. Um, could Texas A&M, could Michigan be ahead of Oklahoma? Maybe. Um, I think that nine spot is probably where Oklahoma's at. And I don't know. USC could be right around that lurking right around there as well. Just because of the hype. I don't think they're, they're a top 10 school, but I think the hype and the media and they want USC to be good. It's just like Texas. Texas is going to be top 15 as well. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, you have the right answer. I'm, my answer was like, what's most likely, like what could potentially happen just to get a rise out of, out of fans? Because I think we could all agree, if USC is ranked above Oklahoma, Oklahoma Twitter is going to go absolutely insane. Oh, yeah. I will go Perfect. absolutely insane on this show. See, I think as... it'd be fucking stupid, but like – uh, the right answer is Oklahoma should be in that seven, eight, nine area. Will they be is what what we still have to look look at. But I mean, even if we're ranked ten, I still, still think that's fair because we, you know, they. I think it is a fair assessment. We did lose two really good quarterbacks, but I don't think Dylan Gabriel is that much of a step down. I think Dylan Gabriel is going to be just fine, yeah. and the the rest of the team, I think, especially on the defense, we got way better. Yeah. Whether Oklahoma starts at 9, 12, 15, if Oklahoma goes 12 and 0, they're in the playoffs. So at the end of the day, I'm sure Venables is just going to say to their guy, to his guys, we just take one game at a time. We win them all. They can't keep us out. And we're 13 and 0 going into the playoffs. So I know. can't. One game that we kind of got to look forward to that's not an Oklahoma game is the Texas Alabama game. I can't remember what week that is. But two. Is it week two? I would I I'd be curious to see if just for the sake sake of rank of uh like TV and to get views if they would put Texas a little higher just so that they could say like the number one versus the number six team in the country being week two the week two game or something. I was going to storm into Austin and Texas is coming in with a lot of hype too. They have one of the best running backs in the country, B. John Robinson. They have a, a good young wide receiver in Xavier Worthy. They just got the number one quarterback from like two classes ago in Quinn Ewers. I mean, their defense still sucks, but now Texas is kind of where Oklahoma was with Lincoln Riley. Who fucking cares about defense when we can score 70 points? But if it, if teams figure out that offense, which they did last year, I don't think they're really going to be much better than they were. Texas, it's like the same year or same thing every year. It's like a broken record. But I do agree. I think they're going to have them ranked and they're going to have them ranked high because it sells tickets or gets eyes on the game. And they, you know, at the end of the day, you got to, they all, all they have to do is win their first game, which is a cupcake game. I don't even know what it is, but I'm sure it's not hard. And then they roll into the game like against LSU. What was that last year or the year before where they got smoked um, pretty good? I think it was against Joe Burrow. I think it was two years ago when they played LSU. But anyway, so this kind of what ended up being a decently long video, and we just had a kind of a open discussion. We're, we're a little slow. I mean, we're just a couple weeks away from football, so we're just trying to get there, and it's, it's the dog days of summer. So do you guys have any final thoughts or anything before Brandon does his end-of-video challenge? All right. I don't. I don't. Yeah, we'll just – 
we'll get their thoughts on the record overall and and why. Just the same kind of the last twenty five minute conversation we just had. Just where do you guys see Oklahoma finishing, and why? Um, I'm curious to see how many people have us picked to win national championships, and I'm I, and I want to read those responses because I think that's really. I mean, I, I mean, I would be more shocked if we lost four games um, than oh. I think. Yeah, like winning a national title is is more realistic to me than losing more than three games. But um, so curious to see how many people have us winning a natty or going to the playoffs versus how many people have us going like eight and four or something. And I'm not going to yeah. count the USC trolls who might find this video and because they, they every now and again they you know they pop up. But yeah, just drop your OU football predictions. Yeah, I I think eleven and two Big Twelve title New Year's Six Bowl. That's that's just me. So not a national championship, but, um, but yeah, no, it was a pretty good video. A lot of good discussion as far as um, what could, what could end up happening, you know, the announcement of Jacoby Johnson, the elite weigh-ins, and then what can end up happening this upcoming season made it this far, subscribe to the channel. It's free, helps us out, like the video, turn the notification bell. So you know, when we go live and when videos come up and get posted Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 30 AM central, uh, be sure to join our membership group. Remember, it's not on the iOS app. You can't join there. You need to get on your phone and go on Safari, or you need to get on your computer to join. Four ninety nine a month, a lot of good content. Remember, we're doing some member only videos that are going to be released on August fifteenth, and we're going to do a members only Zoom call, and we're going to do that uh, here in a couple of weeks. So be sure to join so you can get in on that. And um, you know, if you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify, leave us a review, follow the channel, and find us on social media. Everything's linked below. Follow, like, everything helps us out a ton. And we will catch you guys on Monday.